There's a new FastPass system on the horizon. Is it headed to US parks? We have an update on the Magic Key lawsuit. Will we see resolution before the renewal period starts? And we've got an update on Main Street Electrical Parade merchandise and where to find it. All coming up next on Fresh Bake. Hi guys, David here with Fresh Bake. I've got some Disney news. You wanna hear some Disney news? I've got some Disney news. Do you guys remember a while back when Disneyland Paris announced they're going to start selling Premier Access Passes, basically what we know as Lightning Lane today. It was a big deal back then because most believed that it was a precursor to something like that happening here at Disneyland or in Walt Disney World. And indeed, that is just what happened not long after Genie Plus arrived at Disney World and at Disneyland. You know the rest. Now, all of that is preamble to Disneyland Paris announcing today that starting this summer, they're going to start selling... Premier Access Ultimate. Premier Access Ultimate will allow guests one-time access to 12 FastPass attractions. All 12 for one price, no a la carte, one price of $96 US. All without reservations, you just show up to the attraction and, and get in the queue. Now, I've got questions. Two questions, actually. First question, is this because Disney Premier Access wasn't selling very well at Disneyland Paris? Or is this because guests were asking for, uh, you know, a simpler version, one price for everything, no, no a la carte system? Or is Disney simply just trying to, I don't know, maximize revenue, just cover all their bases? Now, I asked that last question because they are, in fact, going to keep the old system, the a la carte system, which is basically our individual lightning lanes, but for all attractions. They don't have a, an equivalent to Genie Plus. So I guess that's the same way of saying the first <laughs> question before they're trying to cover all their bases. They're trying to maximize revenue. So I guess my assumption would be it's, it's the first option, that they weren't making enough money. They had to try to find a way to make more money <laughs> you know, on this FastPass system. So in comes Disney Premier Access Ultimate. Ultimate. I wonder if they're going to do a Premier Access Ultimate Plus someday. Well, they've already got Plus at Genie Plus. But can they borrow the Plus? Second question, and this is probably more relevant to you and me. Do you think that Premier Access Ultimate, or whatever it is that they wind up calling it here in the United States, do you think it's going to come to the United States? Do you think they're going to apply it to Disney World or Disneyland? I've got some thoughts, obviously. <laughs> Disney World is possible because Genie Plus at Disney World is a mess. It's too cheap. Everybody's got it. And as an evil, would-be supervillain once said, if everybody's super, nobody is. Walt Disney World is full of syndromes. And, and people are upset. I mean, they're upset, first of all, that they have to pay for FastPass, but that's kind of a ship that sailed. Everybody's paying for FastPass these days. But they're also upset because of how complicated it is. And really, what's the, what's the use if you can only... Disney had to put out <laughs> a disclaimer. They said, you want to buy Genie Plus, go ahead. But understand, you're probably only going to get two or three attractions out of this. With that said, what, the, what even is the point of getting... Well, it, there is a point because if you don't get it, you're going to be waiting for 90 minutes to two hours on a lot of attractions. It is in bad shape right now at Walt Disney World. So I think it's a reasonable possibility that Disney might go the Genie Plus Ultimate route, if only because the price point is going to be so much more than Genie Plus is. And that would hopefully thin the herd a little bit. Fewer people will buy it at a higher price point, thus reducing the amount of people using it, thus giving people in standby a better opportunity, spreading things out a little bit more. Because right now, it absolutely favors people who have or are using Genie Plus. And by the way, when I say cost more, I don't mean just the $100 that Disneyland Paris is charging. That's the bottom. There is significantly more demand for services like this at Walt Disney World. Probably more demand that there are, than there is at any other theme park, Disney theme park, in the world. But if they did bring in Genie Plus Ultimate, would they keep the regular Genie Plus service like they're doing at Disneyland Paris. Oh, and by the way, also <laughs> individual lightning lanes. Uh, that's, that's a fascinating proposition. It would seem a crazy idea to try to sell all three, considering the whole purpose of Genie Plus is supposed to make things simpler, it's supposed to make the days more efficient and more fun at Disney World or at Walt Disney World. I don't know if trying to figure out the difference between lightning lane, Genie Plus, and Genie Plus Ultimate, should they ever come to that, I don't know if that's a fun day. Now, if I ran Disney, I would sell just that ultimate version at Walt Disney World. Same way they do at Knott's Berry Farm, same way they do at Universal Studios. 
it seems to be working great there. I don't hear anybody complain about Universal and Nuts. Understand, they don't have quite the, the presence that Disneyland does. They don't have the people, the guests of those parks don't have the same voice that, that uh, guests do at Knott's Berry Farm or Universal. So there is a disparity there. I'm just saying, I don't hear any talk at all coming out of Knott's Berry Farm or Universal with their one price for all the rides uh, system. What about Disneyland? I mean, I got to say, I don't think so. Genie Plus is still selling only on the weekends and hardly at all on the weekdays. So I'm not sure if adding another layer of Genie service would go over very well in a place where it's not going over well to begin with. My best guess is they're going to try to ride this Genie Plus thing out here at Disneyland and try to find some way to sell it perhaps to, to Magic Keys because they're the ones who aren't buying it. As evidenced by Genie Plus not selling during the week when Magic Keys can go because they're still having trouble making reservations for the weekend, which is a conversation for another video, but that's still a thing. Now, from a local's perspective, and not from a perspective that is 3,000 miles away in Florida where Disneyland decisions seem to be being made these days, what worked and what sold better was MaxPass. Disney would never say this, but I would bet a 1,000 fresh baked bucks that MaxPass generated more revenue and more profit than Genie Plus does. There was a significantly higher opt-in rate for MaxPass, something like 80% from what I understand, compared to the 30% for Genie Plus. This is per Chapic, 30% opt-in rate for Genie Plus. And that's for both Disney World and Disneyland. And I would go so far as to say that MaxPass was better. It's a better system. It was more efficient. It worked. We liked it. But I don't expect Disney to retcon things anytime soon, mostly because that would mean admitting defeat. And I don't think that that's a, that's a thing that this current regime, this Disney regime, is ready to do is admit defeat. There are too many, there are more than a few jobs on the line, I think, in terms of making Genie Plus work. So to summarize, Disney Premier Access Ultimate is in at Disneyland Paris. Uh, Genie Plus Ultimate at Walt Disney World is a maybe and probably not at Disneyland. Let's talk next about that Magic Key lawsuit. It's been quite a little bit on that front. In fact, I had almost forgotten about it. That is until last week when it came up again with regard to Disney possibly not allowing annual passes or Magic Keys to renew coming in August. If you haven't already, be sure to check out that video. But to summarize, one of the main talking points of that video is that if that's true, if it's true that they're not going to allow Magic Keys to renew, I believe it's because they're planning on bringing out a whole new Magic Key system. A new one because the current Magic Key program is just giving them way too many headaches and way too much legal exposure. Legal exposure such as the current lawsuit that is essentially accusing Disney of breach of contract and false advertising among other things. So how's it going? Well, I mean, it's still going. Mice Chat reported on Monday that the case is working its way through the system and they're even reporting a response from a U.S. District Court judge. The lawsuit accused Disney of breach of contract, negligent misrepresentation, concealment, false advertisement, and unfair competition. Since then, Disney had filed a motion to dismiss the case, which is standard procedure. Now, I don't know yet uh, what the grounds were that they put forth to dismiss that case, but they did try to have it dismissed. But the judge ruled that the portion of the case that alleged breach of contract and those areas covered by the California Consumer Legal Remedies Act could continue. For example, false advertising. But that's as far as things have gone. And the, the lawsuit was filed five months ago. And I don't get the feeling like we're on any kind of fast track to getting that thing resolved in the next couple of months. It could be that long before we could even get the trial, assuming that there is one. They could settle, of course, uh, but I'm of the opinion that those who brought this suit against Disney did so not for some sort of cash settlement. They're not looking for a windfall here. They're looking for Disney to change the way that they operate. There is folks beyond the, the person named in the lawsuit. There are folks above her and beyond her that, that want Disney to think about, like, uh, I don't know, like travel agencies, hotels. There are lots of uh, affiliated businesses that, that live off of Disney travel and Disney uh, tr uh, parks. So with that said, from my perspective as a... Uh, Disney Magic Key Holder, hoping to renew in August, the clock is ticking. So short of a settlement, I'm not looking for this thing to get resolved uh, before August. But perhaps that's the reason why the Magic Key program kind of feels like it's in limbo right now. Why we're hearing these words that they're not going to renew. 
things are kind of not firm. They're not settled with the Magic Key program. I think Disney's trying to work something out. And I think they're trying to work something out because I don't think they want this lawsuit to see the inside of a courtroom. Going to court risks losing in court. And by the way, there's a very fair chance that that would happen, that they would lose this case. So going to court risks losing to court. And that would not look good right now. Disney is not in a position or a place where they could be losing <laughs> lawsuits like this one. They would, they're already reeling. Heck, like, I'm not even sure winning in court would be a good look for Disney right now because people would just take that and say, you know, Disney's just trying to stick it to us customers. So I think it's clear that they would be so much better off just trying to make a quiet settlement out of court and buy it. When I say settlement though, I don't mean cash settlement. I don't mean paying off the, the, the people who, who brought this case. I mean, what do, what do these people want? Trying to figure out what they want and fixing the Magic Key program to satisfy that, that legal exposure. So stay tuned to Fresh Bake because I have a feeling that this is, man, the run up to August is going to be a very interesting uh, few months. And I'm really looking forward to covering that. Stay tuned to Fresh Baked. And with that, let's brighten the mood a little bit and talk about what happened last weekend at Disneyland. I should say Friday. The whole, the whole night was, was fantastic. It was a brilliant success in my opinion. Main Street Electrical Parade, Disneyland Forever, and World of Color all premiered again on last Friday night, and it was magical by all accounts. I had such an amazing time. Everything, it was a success for Disney as far as I'm concerned. Friday night was an amazing day. Everybody was having a great time. The energy was great. People were having fun. They're out there, you know, getting their, their Elliott buckets and eating the food, buying the merch. Well, kind of buying the merch. Let's talk about that. The merch, it's so fast. Like I mentioned in the videos that we did, there people were there bright and early running through the gift shops claiming as much merchandise as they could get. It was all sold out fairly quickly before the end of the day. Actually, they never even got <laughs> some of the big stuff. They never got the, the t-shirts, uh, the leggings, the lounge fly backpacks, the stuff that they promoted in that Disney Parks blog piece. The only thing that showed up were the ears, but everything else uh, didn't show up on Friday. But we're here to advise that those things that did, that did show up on Friday, that did sell out, they're get, th that stock is getting replenished. They're bringing back more in. You don't have to panic. We were there actually today. As recently as today, there are Elliott buckets everywhere. The Hub, Small World, Frontierland. They even have them in Tomorrowland with cotton candy instead of popcorn. I don't know why, but it looks cute. Actually putting the cotton candy in the Elliott, that looks cute. The turtle sipper is currently sold out, but it's been replaced with this equally cute light bulb sipper. As for merch, we're still waiting for the clothing, still no t-shirts or leggings, and still no lounge fly backpack. But the Elliott plushes are in stock. Uh, these were at the Emporium. So too are the wishables. The wishables were found at World of Disney today in downtown Disney. And there's a new coffee mug that was just released yesterday. So hopefully this puts some of you at ease. I know that there are folks who don't live local in the area and can't go check the parks every day to find out when stuff is available, but it is coming in. They're going to keep bringing in the stock. So if you're able to, just have a little bit of patience and the stuff will come in. Just, just like the, the, black, the backpacks and the shirts and the leggings and all that, that'll come in eventually too. So stay tuned for updates from Fresh Bake because if you can't be there, we'll be there at least a couple times a week. I'm going to check on this every time I'm there for, for the foreseeable future and we'll let you guys know. Until then... Follow us on Instagram at underscore Fresh Baked, on Twitter at Fresh Baked Disney, that's fresh with no E, and on TikTok at Fresh Baked Disney. If you like our show and want to show your support, please do consider joining our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash Fresh Baked. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, everybody. We love you very much. Oh, if you want to book a vacation, letting you know we're affiliated with Getaway Today, book your trips through Getaway Today. There's a link in the description. Uh, you can save a few bucks and get some great customer service. Do that, then know that I love you guys. I really do. I love you guys. Thank you very much for watching. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. And fresh bake.